Well, good morning, Calvary. So glad to have you here for your word for the day. My name is Robert. You know, recently in my life group, I asked the question of what strange thing do you own a lot of? And I wanted everyone in our life group to share what, what do they like to collect or have a lot of? And some of the answers were predictable. There was people that said, oh, I have too many shoes. I have too many coffee cups or hats or t-shirts. Mine? Well, it's lights. If you know me, you know that I love lights. I love good quality flashlights. I like lights on my dirt bikes. I add lights to my vehicles. I like lights. And I've always been that way. I think back, I was eight or nine years old and we were on a family vacation to Michigan to visit my mom's family. My parents had given us some money as kids to buy souvenirs on the trip, some things to take back and remember the trip. And what did I spend my money on, you ask? Well, little Robert thought the best use of that money was to buy a flashlight. But not just any flashlight. I bought a flashlight at Walmart. Pretty exciting, right? But it was one of those big black square battery, six volt massive flashlights. This thing was probably as big as my head back then. And boy, did I think that was the best souvenir from Michigan ever. You may really wonder what the point of this is, and I promise there is a point. But see, as we look at the book of Exodus, so we've been walking through the 10 plagues that, of Egypt the last few weeks and been talking about their significance. And today we're on plague number nine, and I was really excited when I saw which one I was assigned to talk about this week. And I think you'll see why. Let's take a look. Exodus chapter 10, starting verse 21, it says this. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, and there will be darkness over the land of Egypt, and darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. You little ones may also go with you. Only let your flocks and your herds remain behind. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take them to serve the Lord our God. And we do not know where we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said, Go away from me. Take care never to see my face again. For on the day you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, As you say, I will not see your face again. So plague number nine comes, and it's a plague of darkness. Now that initially doesn't seem that bad compared to some of the others. Some of you may be thinking, well, I'll take darkness over boils or frogs or gnats or flies or some of these other ones. But it said the darkness was so bad they couldn't move. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in darkness so dark you couldn't even see your hand in front of you, but it's incredibly disorienting and challenging. The only place I've ever experienced something that dark was in a cave when we all shut our lights off. But even in that moment, we had to cover up things like the glow of the hands on our watches because they provided enough light to see in that amount of darkness. The Egyptians had nothing. It says for three days they didn't do anything, they didn't go anywhere because it was so dark. It said they could feel the darkness. But did you catch what else it said? It said wherever the Israelites were, they had light. They were fine because God was with them. There was, there's hope and peace that you have when, when you have light, even in a dark time, even if it's a small flashlight. There's comfort when you have a little bit of light when you're surrounded by darkness. And because of God, that's what the Israelites had. And you know, as you look around our world today, there's an incredible amount of darkness. Not because the sun isn't shining, we live in Havasu, that's not a problem, but because the world around us is progressively caring less and less about the God of the Bible. And maybe you lament this, maybe you see the darkness in the world around you, maybe you even feel this increasing darkness because the effect it has in our world. But take heart, because Jesus says this in John chapter 8, verse 12. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. See, if you're in Christ, you will not walk in darkness. You will not have to live in the fear, anxiety, weight, and pain of the darkness of our world. You get to live in the light and the hope of the God of the universe. So be reminded that no matter how dark our world gets, you will always have the light of Christ shining on you no matter where you go. But also remember that Jesus says that we as his followers are the light of the world and that we're to let our light shine before others so they may see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. 
So as our world gets darker, we get the chance to shine brighter and shine the light of Christ into dark and difficult places and moments. So trust in Christ as your light, but don't forget to let your light shine so that other people can see the hope of Christ in your life. Hope that you have a great and bright day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.